Welcome to the Commission on Disabilities. Thank you so much. And it's, it's great to be with you all. It's great to have you. Um, it's, it's fun every year getting a new person from the select board. So yeah. that's wonderful. Jean, oh, did great. you? We've got, yeah, go ahead, Janet. No, Bonnie. <laughs> Oh, <coughs> Bonnie, I, your, hi, your, um, hi, your um, email did not go through. To who? You. My email to you did not go through. It bounced back. You can grab my email address from the me messages that Jean sends? Yeah, that's what I sent it to. What I sent was the revised um, minutes and it bounced back. I sent you a note that said that I was sending out the revised minutes. What you sent out was the, you do the minutes, right? I, I have the right, do I, the, no, I don't no. I have the wrong person. Um, okay, who, right. who, who am I looking for? You think Karen Young and Karen no. does have, she has an old email address that does trip you up sometimes. Okay. Yep. I and know. I, I, what's her name? Lauren, Lauren is currently the, the minute. Taker. Lauren, okay. Yeah. Sorry, but sorry, Bonnie. Forget all that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> but La okay, Lauren's email was yes. not correct. No, I didn't say that. I thought you were trying to reach out to Karen, and I didn't say no. It no, correct. I wanted to. Have the, I sent out. The I, I, I don't know anything about Lauren's. <laughs> no, okay. okay. Lauren takes take some minutes. And she yes. sends them to me to be um, edited. Reviewed? Yeah, yeah. Be edited. Bon and Bonnie, then Jean I sent them out without going through the step of having them. Okay, yeah. so I sent them out so, again, sorry. but I couldn't yes. reach Lauren. Her email didn't go through. Oh, okay. So um, I sent them out without her permission, but I just sent them out. Okay. Bonnie, I just forwarded the email with the minutes to you. So hopefully that, that will arrive. That yeah, was I from never, the I never received I have. them either. I didn't receive oh. them. Okay. Oh. So, so I, I'm gonna propose then that we um, table uh, approving the minutes and we can approve them next month. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, can you guys all hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a little bumpy because I'm in the, yeah. the car here. Yeah. Um, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lloyd, you're with us. That's great. Yes, thank you. Glad okay. to be back. Good. So we have a quorum. Uh, so we can call the meeting to order. And no, we don't, um, do we have a, uh, do we have a clerk? Uh, well, Karen, would you be willing to do minutes? Um, uh, okay. Um, uh, all right. I, I need to get some something to write with. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we'll give you a minute. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. I, I actually fell and broke my hip a week ago, so I'm kind oh, of... Oh, no. no. <laughs> Ever, no. Oh. oh. Yes. Me and my dog. Can I... Can I I'd like... Oh. Can I to do minutes but if i do can i get the recording of this in order to that's how i always do them is yeah by recording it on my phone but i'm not i'm not on my phone i'm on my ipad right now and um sure my phone is dead but is there a way i could get the uh recording of this meeting and then i can just synthesize it into minutes i i think that that certainly is possible because the town records all of these I yeah. see on, on my screen in the upper right-hand corner, it says recording, yes, at least on, right. on this iPad. So um, I, can, I can send an email to um, Jeremy Romuel yeah. who, from the town who sets these up and ask him how we can access the recording. Okay. Because it's really meant so that people can go and look, look at it, so. Okay, okay right. great. You're off the hook, I'm so sorry to hear you have Broke your head. Oh, yeah. Karen, how oh, are my you? Goodness. Not add to Karen's burden. <laughs> right. Karen, that's all right. It, it's I'm, I'm healing, but yeah, it was it was unexpected. Yeah. How long yeah. will oh. you be house? How long will you be housebound? 
don't know my past. Um, I'm, uh, it happened, I had the surgery a week ago Tuesday and I'm, I should have the, the staples removed next week. So did um, they fix, they fix the hip? They didn't uh, replace it, they fixed it. No, no, it's a complete hip replacement. It's yeah. Oh. Yeah. So. Uh, anyway, uh, sorry about that. I feel your pain, Karen. I was there yeah, telling I, mine was just degenerated instead of uh, broken. But, uh, um, anyway. Okay, well, please. We can move on. Uh, we send, <laughs> yeah, we all send you our good wishes for healing. Thank you. Indeed. Um, so we have Rick Follender with us today, um, who is the chair of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Committee in Concord. And uh, he and I had a, a little discussion about the use of mobility devices uh, for assistance for people with disabilities. And I asked him to come to just, he put it so eloquently, I thought, to um, explain that to the whole commission. So can I ask you to, to share your thoughts on that, Richard? Sure. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Massachusetts to West for 13 miles. Um, basically, according to the current rules of the uh, trail, of the Bruce Freeman Trail, as well as most paved rail trails, mobility assist devices are permitted, yeah, thinking about the ones we normally think about. In other words, a wheelchair or a scooter. Um, there may be other devices like e-bikes, which a person who requires assistance could use, but that the e-bike issue is one that's being discussed both at the local, state, and federal level about their appropriateness on rail trails. But in terms of what we would normally think about as a mobility-assisted device, they are permitted. And I don't think there should be any problem with that in, in, in Concord. Or if you, once the bridge is done, you want to go up the, up the bowl on the trail, you'd be welcome to all the way. Uh, that's a quick summary. There you know, would be instances where if someone had been using like a golf cart or something mm -hmm. that would not probably be allowed on a rail trail simply because it's too wide and would make it you know, unsafe for other users. So that, that's kind of the summary of where we are. The committee itself is looking at the e-bike issue along with other, other uh, towns that have rail trails. So, any questions? Okay. Uh, concerns? I couldn't hear whoever was yeah, asking the question. You're breaking up. Audio. That you would expect. Oh, sorry. Okay. It looks no, like it's a little better now. Yeah. Okay. Um, on what's, what's your sense about some of those other devices? Like e bikes? specifically well yeah. well i'm no i was thinking about things like segway segway would be permitted if it's a mobility assist device yeah yes okay richard do you know what the dimensions are of are a box chart and what the measurements are sir the dimensions of the trail or? no no of the golf cart <laughs> what is the dimension yeah. of the golf cart i do not know it, it would vary. I know that the, I think my yeah. my feeling is the golf cart is wider than the than the uh, lane on the trail. If you know what I mean, the, the travel yeah. lane, it would be yeah. wider yeah. than the travel yeah. lane. Okay. It would require a person in the other half of the yeah. trail yeah. to One side. move off the trail. Okay, I have sent a document out. You didn't get it, but I sent it out to the committee members that there's actually these. Um, the Department of Justice has guidelines mm -hmm. around what they call other other power driven oh, mobility devices. Right. I've got I've seen a document that yeah, and the golf carts are in there, and it does depend on measurement. And you can you know if there's if there's a valid reason that it causes a safety problem because of wideness, but it yeah. So I that's I, I why think that. Yeah, if that would be the reason. There's been no determination on that at this point. Yeah. So if someone uh, wanted to use a golf cart, I think it would be something we'd have to look at 
you know, and it would be determined yeah. whether it was a safety issue for, you know, everybody to have a golf and cart on the cart. It seems there are some parts of the trail where it would accommodate a golf cart size thing. I mean, maybe it does depend, like Lloyd said, it depends on the golf cart. I don't know anything about golf carts. Yeah, so right. I don't right. Know. But, well, um, one of the issues is often yeah. they're they're like at a, at an intersection of a main road. There'll be bollards up in the road, you know, at the like in West Concord, and I'm not sure a golf cart would fit through there even. Um, it, it wouldn't, if you know what I mean. I don't think it would, it would but I, I haven't measured it and I haven't done the dimensions. But I I uh, that's something I'll I'll do just so we have that information. Sure, Lloyd, yeah. it's. Did you have a question or a comment? Uh, no, uh, I, I was just saying that I, I've seen it the set up in West Concord. I'm almost certain that a golf cart would not fit through there. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain as well. I haven't actually yeah. measured it, but I'm, I'm familiar with golf carts <laughs> to some extent. Yeah. I was yeah, a caddy yeah. once, so. Uh, oh. uh, yeah. My parents so, went to Savannah and had a golf cart. We used to drive it around until my wife wrecked it one time. <laughs> <laughs> so I just so wonder was, if instead of just sort of saying altogether, no golf carts, right? If there no. was somebody who wanted to use a golf cart and wanted to use it on a part of the trail where it didn't pose any risk, mm -hmm. whether or not it would be, I don't know if it's just too hard to, you know, monitor and administer something like that, but I do feel like, you know, in some parks and state parks and, you know, they, they do allow them. And mm -hmm. as, as, a mo as a mobility device for a person with a disability, sure. um, they do allow them, but it does all depend on things like the, you know, the space and the safety factors. Yeah. So I wonder if instead of just saying no golf carts, well, we, we, we wouldn't post a sign no golf. Yeah, cards. no, no, it's not going to be posted. So. Um, right. I, and and so it would be a really it would be as you say an, an individual decision. Yeah, yeah. Made. I, I think one of the that. issues would be how would you get a golf cart to the trail? You'd have to drive it, presumably, yeah. and yeah. you'd have to drive it where it's not going to go on a sidewalk, and you'd have to drive it on the road, I guess. So. As a practical yeah. matter, it's difficult to see where a golf cart would be yeah, yeah. and how a golf cart would be better than a scooter. Um, and, yeah. you know, just from my yeah. you know, limited yeah. knowledge yeah. of the situation, it seems like a scooter sure. does what a golf cart would do. Right. Okay. Janet, you have a question? Yeah, I, I do. I'm just curious. Okay. Have there been any instances of anybody requesting the use of a golf cart? Either on the sidewalks or on the streets or on the, on the obviously on the trail. Not to my knowledge in Concord, no. I mean, even, not even to take it outside your own golf club. It, it, it's. Um, I don't. I, think I've never legal. seen I don't one think downtown. A golf or... Legal on a road, and it's not. That's legal correct. It's not. Road. So it wouldn't be legal mm -hmm. to yeah. get, get it to a trail. Yeah. yeah. Unless yeah. you had, a, unless you had a trailer, <laughs> and that, that seems a little low. So it know. may it may be a non-issue. Yeah. You'd be a very yeah. determined person. Yeah. Um, right. I mean, yeah, but it would be that, you know, there's other, I think the, the more more vexing problem potentially is on the on the electric assist bicycles, where a person who has limited mobility in terms of leg strength or whatever, or could have some other condition that would make it difficult for them to go full force on a bike, can get the assistance from a, a, an electric bike. So yeah, I think you probably again, couldn't. that might be so an, an all out ban on those could impact someone who yeah. who uses who would, who would be using that as an assisted device rather than the scooter, okay. let's say. Yeah. But again, we're not in the at this point, e-bikes would be allowed. I mean, there's no yeah. there's no. Uh, and again, it, and it's got to be something that's done on a a, a scale because Concord can't make a decision that would countervene what Acton is doing or what Sudbury might do or because somebody's riding something that's permitted in Acton then you get to the Concord line you can't do it it's not that's not going to work but because of state funds would it be something that the state would um well it actually goes to federal 
on federal funding, uh, you know, provide fed, federal government provides the funds that the state then dis, uh, distributes for these these kind of projects. So it is it is a federal and state issue, really. Right. So it would have to be a policy that complies with federal. Right, and there's there's, there's right now there's leg state legislation that would regulate e-bikes, um, and they. The, you know, some of the current proposals would include e-bikes as permitted uses on rail trails. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I think, okay. you know, from the, from the uh, Bruce Freeman committee's point of view, you know, we're, we are, um, would be interested in knowing any issues that arise for anyone in the disability community in regard to this trail, because, you know, certainly it's a, a, a benefit as a place to to get out and get exercise, get out and see nature, and get out in the in a safe environment uh, with for, to be mobile. And if people with um, disabilities are having issues with you know people going too fast or people not you know giving way, whatever, um, that's something we'd like to. <clears throat> I, I have I have a question that something that comes up for me all the time, and that I have a recumbent trike that I use on the trail. Mm -hmm. And on the portions of the trail where it says walk your bike, <laughs> you can't. I can't. Well, I can't really get up and walk my trike across the. I understand why it's there. And sure. makes sense. You're talking about like Junction Park kind of. Area. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Well, so again, I, I think I, that would I, fall I, into the category I, where you would be permitted to ride a scooter. Well, that's what I always wondered. You know, I, I'm, yeah. Of course, I'm doing it, but I always wondered like, if somebody no, you're, I think you're challenges me, it's going to be it's going to be okay. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm confident that the people from the Green Thumbs would would not have a problem. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. They have a problem with people like me riding their bike through, not somebody yeah. who would be in a in your situation at all. Yeah. Yeah. And again, sure. Junction Park. I mean, you've got to do that jog by the cafe and everything. I mean, that's right. pretty narrow there. In Very terms. narrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I barely, I just, just fit through this. Yeah. yeah. Um, Richard, I, a question that came to me by someone outside of the commission that just when they knew we were going to be talking about this is who polices the, the Bruce Freeman trail? Okay. Uh, the, the Concord police ultimately. Oh, okay. Um, however, there is no, um, there's 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 no enforcement mechanism in reality, you know. Uh -huh. In terms of you know, we, we there's no ticket giving ability. In other words, um, for people. However, you know, the police have have been patrolling on their bikes, and if there's an issue, obviously that would be not you know just an issue of some kind of crime or accident, they would be on the scene immediately. I think in terms of following the rules, yeah, they they are the enforcement people, but it's again, as a, as a matter, there's not necessarily the, the uh, corresponding actual legal definition of how mm -hmm. you would give somebody a ticket if they don't comply. So if somebody yeah. came on with a dirt bike or a, you know, an ATV, oh. it would just be a matter of kicking them off and then you could maybe make a you know a charge of you know disorderly conduct or public nuisance or something like that uh -huh. potentially mm -hmm. um, fortunately i think once the trails are paved it, it, there isn't that much problem with that i think the problem yeah. with ATVs and stuff like that tends to be more on trails that aren't paved but are still multi-use um, okay meryl uh, yes, I have an unrelated question. I know that um, you did a trail count um, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and I just wondered if there was any indication from your numbers of of people with disabilities on the trail that were noted or, or not. We don't have the results of that trail count mm -hmm. yet. Uh, oh, okay. The way it was done, uh, it there's a, I'm not sure that we'll capture that information. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Some people did, I did, I counted dogs too. So, <laughs> um, so I, I, you know, I think we'll get some of that information, definitely. I mean, I saw certainly, I was on the Neshoba Bridge and there were definitely people from Concord Park who were, who were using the, uh, the trail. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, right, and also good. related to that, that curb issue is is being addressed. I don't know if it's been done, but it is being done to oh, make good. to make um, that was apparently a mistake um, that was not you know the design was not the way it was supposed to be. There is supposed there will be the ability to 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 get on at that point without having to get up over the curb. But again, there it won't. It'll be set up in a way that doesn't allow vehicles to do that and would probably be narrower than a golf cart. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. It certainly looked like that was a mistake. Yeah, yeah. I mean, things happen, obviously. Right, yeah. yeah project. Okay. Any further questions or comments on this issue? Yeah, I, I, I mentioned this. Oh, issue. yeah, Lloyd. Uh, no, not on this issue. I thought we were done. Oh, okay. I have another question when yeah. we're done. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll just conclude with we are uh, the committee itself uh, does have openings on our committee. I know you guys are already on some committees, so you're plenty busy and committed and can't do it anyway. But if you happen to have someone who uh, in the disability community or someone even who just sort of wants to get on the Bruce Freeman Trail Committee with that in mind, it's kind of they're going to be the watchdog. Um, we'd be glad to have them join the committee. So okay. I guess that's about it. I guess we should get our rain slickers on and- uh, Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> prepare and for tomorrow. Prepare for tomorrow. I've got to go do yeah. a little prep outside, yeah. All right, okay. thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much, Richard. I appreciate your time coming to meet with us. Sure. See ya. Okay, right. sure, bye-bye. Lloyd, yeah, you, um, you had a different uh, question. Yes, I did. And I apologize if this was covered at the last meeting. What is the status of our being able to offer the Zoom option for meetings going forward? So we, this was not covered at the last meeting. Okay. Um, we, we had town meeting since then. And then um, the the ruling from the Commonwealth was that meetings needed to be in person, but then about, gosh, a week later, maybe, they walked that back and said that meetings could be virtual. Um, and I believe that goes at least through the end of the year. And we'll certainly see beyond that. Susan, maybe you have more info on that. You're muted, good. Uh it's I can't remember the exact date, but it's April 2022. Oh, okay. And we hope the legislature will develop a permanent um, guidance on um, because it went, once it expires, it's not um, you can't meet remotely. One person can call in, but it can't that person can't help constitute a quorum. So there's all these regulations. So it's 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 essentially going back to in-person only. Uh -huh. um, but because everyone's had this wonderful success with Zoom meetings over the course of the pandemic, many, many cities and towns are pushing the state to make some permanent um, regulations in the open meeting law that would allow what we're doing right now. Thank you. Permanent. Oh. And, and um, there are there's some specific regulations that affect our commission um, due to the, the nature of, of the people who make up the commission. Uh, so prior to COVID, we were allowed to, as long as, as we had um, a, a quorum in the room, we were allowed to have up to two people um, by phone. That was sort of pre-Zoom days. And uh, my, my sense would be that we would at least be allowed that going forward, which mm -hmm. would make it a little bit easier for Me members who have a hard time traveling or, or are, are away and wanting to connect from a distance or whatever. I, I believe you're right. It would default to whatever existed before, so. Sure, okay. Thank you, Susan. Thanks. Yes. Okay, um, Bonnie, I see you're here. Jennifer's not here. Is there any update on the, the funding process, the, the thoughts on that? 
There is no update. <clears throat> we have been doing some information gathering, but it's not very quick. So there's nothing to report at this time. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, moving on to new business. Um, it's that time of year we need to formally elect a chair. So you guys, I've been the chair for a long time. I'm, I'm certainly willing to continue. I'm also absolutely willing to step aside if there's someone else who would like to step into this role. Um, you know, no, no harm, no foul. I'm, I'd be happy to do that and let someone else have the opportunity. Um, so yes, Janet. I think that you have um, so much knowledge in this field. As, as a professional caregiver, not caregiver, I can't do the word that I want, but a professional in this field, Advocate. I would really like to see you stay on as chair. Same. Well, then I guess we need um, we need a formal nomination and second. I would, not, I would like to nominate that Jean Goldsberry stay as chair. Second. I second. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Karen, can we have you uh, call people? Yes. Um, Mary Beth? Yes. Um, Janet? Yes. <laughs> Bonnie? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Meryl? Okay. Meryl, you're um, muted. She's muted. Meryl, you're muted. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. And yes. Okay. Turn left on the main street. You vote yes. Um, Susan, uh, as a, a um, member of the select board on with this commission, it's a little different than others. You actually are a voting member. Oh. Okay. Well, I Susan. would vote yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I vote yes. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't quite understand your placement here so I'm, i apologize i, for I didn't either because it's, oh, okay. it's different from any other committee so. okay. right it's it is different from any any of the others so okay all right well thank you for that um we're also according to our charter we're supposed to have an official clerk and um that that person would be responsible for minutes, although it doesn't necessarily, you know, if, if we can have Lauren continue or have someone else from the town who's able to assist us with that, it doesn't necessarily mean having to take the minutes. But um, do we have a, anyone willing to be in that position of clerk? Janet. I didn't understand the distinction you just made about Lauren. Okay. Sure. So Lauren, who works for the Council on Aging, um, was kind of quasi assigned to us um, when I asked the town for some for an assistant for the commission. Many uh, town committees have a a, um, a town staff person who who schedules the meetings and gets the either the room or the Zoom or whatever and sends out minutes and sends out agendas and, and so forth. And um, so um, Lauren was selected as the person who could help us with um, taking the minutes. So she's, when she is able to come, she's taking the and, um, She's then, you know, when they're approved, she'll send them on to the, the town for inclusion on the website. Um, but she can't, she's not a member of the commission, so she can't be the official clerk. The clerk needs to be someone who is a member. Does that make sense? Is she willing so to the continue clerk? in that? that role in, in I, I don't know. I don't know. I know that during the time she was first assigned to us was when the senior center was closed down and they were doing a few things over Zoom, but nobody was coming on site. So she had a little bit of um, excess capacity to, to do some other things. 
Um, but certainly if, if she is too busy now, we can ask the town once again to assign someone to us who would be able to do that. Yes, Janet. I would volunteer to be clerk. I'm clerk for other organizations. And, and um, Lauren has been sending the minutes to me to rewrite. <laughs> and so since okay. I do that anyhow, I might as well do it. Um, I think Karen did a great job and I don't know that I can be as good as Karen at it. I think I'm gonna need some help <laughs> understanding the fine points of- I'll of help you. <laughs> but if Karen helps me, yeah. Uh, I can help there you. Things, there are things I'm still getting used to the to the people and the you know, the stay what unless Mary Beth would you like to do it? No, I find uh, uh, it sounds to me like <clears throat> if the clerk is just kind of a ceremonious thing, I wouldn't mind. But it sounds like you could end up really being responsible for the minutes. Yes, I find sure. that I find that if I do that. I can't really participate in the meeting. And I think anyone who's yes. been it makes it really hard for you to participate because you're always trying to capture stuff and write it down. And I, I did it successfully for a while by doing a recording of it. And then, but it was taking me forever because um, the only way that I really type is by like laying down with an iPad and I'm listening and it was just like really hard for me. And so I, you know, I don't want to get myself in that situation again. Yeah. Sure. And I, and I, have like the opposite, I have the opposite problem when I'm taking minutes or the opposite attitude. When I'm taking minutes, I pay attention. I pay attention okay. to the meeting and I try to understand everything that's going on. So I'm better <laughs> off taking yeah. minutes than I am not. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like All a perfect right. fit then, Janet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sure perfect. does. It sure does. Yeah. yeah. All right, is, so so we need a formal. Mo yeah, go ahead, Karen. No, I was just wondering: is it can we ensure that there will always be that recording available for whomever is taking the minutes? Because that would really, I think, facilitate the whole process. I I never yeah. had access to the recordings when I was taking yeah. the minutes. So you know that I think that would really be a, a positive if we could make sure that's. Well, that's okay. I, I believe I believe it's the town's position at this point that okay. all public meetings are going to be recorded. Okay. Does that sound right, Susan? Oh, she's yeah, muted. Um, I believe so. Um, I'm not sure about every one of them, but I know if they're recorded, then they're available. Mm -hmm. And they may not okay. broadcast them on Minuteman Network, um, uh -huh. but if you contact the town manager's office, uh, you can find out how, how to, uh, they can send you a link. I may have missed this, but okay. what if we're in person? Yeah. On Zoom. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I was saying, what if we're all in person? Uh, we'll one more right here. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's what I used uh, when I, when I was memory. taking the minutes. I just used my iPhone. Yeah, you just have to open the door. I used the voice memo on my iPhone, and I would record them, and then later on, I would listen to it and just synthesize them. Just paid here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think until, well, I'm not sure. What, I know that a number of committees are doing a, a hybrid meeting, the select board is, where we right. meet, but you, people can also join on Zoom and Natural Resources is doing the same thing. So, um, and those are recorded. Um, but I know what you're saying, because when we started Economic Vitality Committee, they, they would, somebody would record them on, on the phone. But I think what you can assume, <clears throat> at least in the short term, till we figure out what the long-term plan is that, um, the meetings will be recorded and therefore you'll be able to access them through a link to be able to review them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's really great. That certainly makes it easier for whomever. Sorry, we're just going into the house. Um, so we need a motion then and a second. 
for uh, Janet, who's volunteered. I, I move that Janet be um, assigned the responsibility of being town of the clerk of the clerk of the committee commission. Second. Okay. Um, all right, Mary Beth. Yes. Um, yes. Um, Susan? Yes. Jean? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Now, do I have to ask Janet again? I'm sorry, I'm confused. <laughs> I, Janet, yes. yes, okay. All I'm right. Really. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. So we've, we've fulfilled that part. Um, do I have to accept? <laughs> uh, given that you volunteered, I don't okay, think you I have, don't have to, to accept. accept. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me just sit down here. Turn on the light. Okay. Sorry about the sort of confusion with all this. Um, so we um, talked about reviewing our charter at this meeting. And I, I sent you guys just this afternoon, the original charter that we had for the commission. And um, it's a, a short amount of time, but I'm wondering if people had a chance to review it, if there are comments, changes, I didn't see it. I'm sorry. I didn't check my. Okay. I got distracted. When did you send it about? Uh, probably around one. Okay. Yeah. Should we read it out loud? We Can certainly post could. It? Yeah. It's long. Yeah, it's kind of long. Yeah. It's. Okay. Uh, not that long. I mean, some sections are about the formation. So that's yeah, not true, that. true. Yeah, it's more the, the, the first chunk and then the, the later. Uh, mm -hmm. There's another paragraph somewhere in there that maybe is more relevant. Right. Um, can you post it? Uh, can I put it on my screen? Yeah. I can in a minute. I'm going to have to go sign in on my desktop so that I can pull it up from, um, oops, from my office computer. So it's, it, it'll take a minute or two to do that. I can share my screen, that helps. Oh, that would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, that's exactly what we need. Thank you very much. So, you know, looking at the original charter, our, our, you know, duties were to provide information, referral, and so forth, um, both to individuals and businesses. And, and I think we've done some of that, um, coordinating activities with other local groups and uh, collaborating basically with the town. Um, and any federal or state entities. Um, so those were the sort of the guiding principles. I think the whole piece about membership, you're right, we've kind of, we're kind of beyond that. Um, this was about the initial formation and We've, we, you know, how many years the initially members served and so forth. Um, so looking at powers and duties, researching issues, um, learning what needs are, coordinating with other local groups. I don't want to read this to you guys, but um, certainly contacting other organizations that, that we can collaborate with on things. And we've done some of that, not so much with veteran services, but with the COA and with the CPAC, um, collaborating with town staff, 
consulting with the town ADA coordinator, which reminds me, um, Kate said that she would not be able to join us tonight. Um, she has had some uh, surgery very recently and she is just back on part-time light duty. So she's hoping to join us next month. Um, trying to maximize participation of people and encourage public awareness. That's certainly something, Bonnie, you, you've been, been working toward um, establishing short and long-term goals, providing information, referral, and so forth, working with the town um, around whatever issues that they might have. We are to file an annual report, uh, which we have, have been doing every year. Um, and then kind of whatever else comes along that, that either we see as needed or the town sees as needed. And um, the open meetings law portion of this is pretty typical with all of the, the, uh, the committees in the town. So that's not anything specific to us. So one, one um, change I would suggest that we make in this is um, changing committee to commission yes. because we are a commission and um, removing some of that kind of middle portion about the you know first people who's going to serve for one year and three years and so right. forth. Yeah, I think that portion of it um, we can remove. And even the ones, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just have one other, it's a minor edit, but just changing board of selectmen to select board. Oh, thank you, Susan, yes. yes. Thank you. So I, it seems to me that this serves us pretty well in terms of um, our charter, that this is what we started with, it's what we've been doing. And, you know, other than removing that, that chunk on membership or maybe just carving it down to something about um, at least five, no more than nine members and so forth, um, I think the, my sense is the rest of it works well for us. How about the rest of you? Yes. Yes, I would agree. I agree. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me one moment. Sorry. Mayor Burgers? No. Sorry. Um, Okay, so um, I would be happy to- Can anybody hear me? Yes. yes. I can't hear anybody. Oh. oh. Really? I'm not, I'm not. Hmm. Okay. Um, something's can happened you, to my sound. Can you turn your can volume you up? Other? No. Yes. I'm Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm able to hear the others. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just mm -hmm. heard Lloyd, Mary Beth. Yeah. Right. I can hear everybody. I can hear everybody too. I can hear Janet. Okay. Yes, we can hear you, Janet. Mm -hmm. So maybe your volume got turned down somehow. Unfortunately, she can't hear you say that. <laughs> oh, that's right, Bonnie. Oh, no, that's <laughs> terrible. I have a strange comment that I just want to throw out. Um, sure. A friend of mine is, a, she's a nurse leader up at a hospital, and they have a, a stand-up meeting every morning um, with um, all the officers from all the departments to talk about any priority issues. And it's only 15 minutes, and Something they do at the beginning of it, though, every time is they say, 
this is this this is the meeting for this we're formed to and in our case we would say to promote the inclusion and integration of persons with disabilities in the activities services and employment opportunities of the community today is july 8th and we have nine people present or whatever but they just kind of say it every time and it might sound redundant but <clears throat> It felt nice as a reminder of what the mission of the group was. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to throw that out as an idea. I like the idea. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Yeah, I think can that. You hear, can you know, anybody hear me? Yes. 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 I can't hear anybody, and you seem to be talking. And uh -huh. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Can someone send I, I can hear I can see you talking, but on my screen I just have the let me I'll the try to charge. I'll try to send her an email. I don't think she does tech. So Jean, with that in mind, I think I'm, I'm gonna if, sign off and sign back in again. Okay. Yeah. If people were interested in that idea, then we might possibly want to reword. I can't even do that. So it's less of a mouthful. Okay. <laughs> well. Bonnie, you are a very graceful writer. Would you like to take a, a crack at that? Just to take, uh, take this comment, this, this, sure. um, this content, and then mm -hmm. see if it can just be tightened up a little bit? Yeah, yeah. It okay. would be basically a mission statement. Sure, I can do that. I wouldn't change any content. I'd just, just word it a little bit more in a more streamlined manner. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a great idea. I think it's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. Okay, very good. So I'll take a crack at editing the um, the that middle membership section and changing um, board of selectmen to select board and committee to commission, and I will send that back out to you all. Good. And I won't wait. I, I won't wait until the afternoon of the meeting. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I'll stop sharing okay. now. Is that a good idea? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the the next thing on the agenda is to discuss FY22 goals. And you know, what are the things that we would like to accomplish this fiscal year? I mean, I know that Jennifer and I would be really happy to kind of complete our project and, and mm -hmm. have the have the group be totally on board with a giving plan that fits within our mission statement and our uh, limitations as a town board, mm -hmm. town commission. Great. Yes. Meryl. I'd Meryl, like to see, yes. I, I'm, now I'm muted. Um, I'd like to see us do or continue efforts to, um, you know, <laughs> get the word out. In other words, a publicity um, push. Um, which we've talked about several times, but there was there was some very nice discussion at the last meeting, I believe, about ways of getting into the newspaper um, and also producing a brochure um, okay. that can be, it, it does not have to be, um, you know, a, a great <laughs> booklet, but I think taking some of the essence of, of our statement, as long as we just went over it and just mm -hmm. encapsulating um, the salient points would be very, um, I think, useful. And we have the funds available now to actually produce it. So mm -hmm. I would, I would like to see us um, produce something like that and and make it known that it's available. Yeah. 
Okay, great. Lloyd. Uh, two things. First, brief update on uh, what Kate and I have been doing to explore the issue of uh, making any kind of town notices, et cetera, uh, more readable for people who may have, for various reasons, cognitive limitations. Um, Kate was going, and I had mentioned to her, and we'd spoken about, there is a computer program that can look at any written uh, statement and say, okay, this is written at the sixth grade reading level, eighth grade, et cetera. Uh, Kate was gonna speak to the IP people in town about that, but then of course she's been out. So I have not heard back and I'm gonna certainly wait until she's really working full time to kind mm -hmm. of ask her about that. Uh, the other thing that I had started to do literally right before COVID was speaking with the Chamber of Commerce about accessibility of businesses in town. And there was, there was interest in that. She was gonna bring it back to the Chamber of Commerce meeting, but this was literally right before COVID. So uh, my plan, if people agree, is to contact her again and explore this issue. That sounds great. That's great. Definitely. Good, okay. And, you know, it's, it's on the agenda for this meeting, but one of the things I would like to see us do is establish an accessibility award. You know, it doesn't have to be an expensive award, but, you know, even if it's a, a little plaque or a, or a certificate or something, um, I think that's a good goal. And that's one that certainly can tie in with the, um, increasing awareness and, and um, you know, potential for news coverage or whatever that Meryl was talking about. I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. How about others? Janet. How do you feel about a pre presentation to the selectmen? This is started with Merrill and Mary Beth going to the selectmen and um, protesting as kind of, they grew into the commission. And I wonder about going back to the selectmen and letting them know what's happened. How long has it been, Merrill, about five, eight, 10 years? Well, it's 2014. Um, yeah. And just so to say what's happened in the last six years. Just make a presentation and that would get us coverage because it would be on, um, because it would be covered by the, in the selectmen's meeting. Sure. Sure. That sounds like- We, nice we could start yeah. with how we originally went to the selectmen and, and with this mm -hmm. idea, and it was just sort of relegated to, okay, go ahead and do it. And then became, it grew into commission and. That was a nice transition, and I think it's a nice story. Mm -hmm. Great. So maybe that's something that we could do in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, October. fall. Yeah. Um, yeah, Susan. You could, if you contact uh, the new chair is Terry Ackerman, mm -hmm. and oh, her sure. email's on the website. If and you yeah. could, you know, contact her and ask her for it date and tell her what you want to do and she okay she sets the schedule so great well october is disability awareness month oh perfect. so that would be a good time to do it it would also be a good time to um if if we can put the parameters together before then to be um giving an accessibility award so it might be two opportunities for some positive um, information about our group to uh, come to the town. And just a reminder that from my research, we would want to write up <laughs> something and then send it to the person at the town to, you know, whatever flourishes the town might want to add or edits, and then they would be mm -hmm. the one to send that. So we have to right. put in that time in for their review and uh, formalization of our press release. Sure, Mary, Mary Beth. 
Um, I haven't thought this out really well, but one thought I had is um, one way to increase our visibility is to invite certain key members of the community to our meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes they can be invited to present on what they're doing because they like a chance to showcase. Or, but we could also invite them to say, you know, with the sort of in the spirit of we are the Commission on Disability. Um, what issues, what are your barriers to making your establishment more accessible to people with disabilities? And so, you know, mm -hmm. something like the Chamber of Commerce to come and say, you know, what are the barriers that people are facing to, you know, to make it more accessible? How can we be supportive? How can we help? How can we advocate? Um, so that I'm something like that. I'm wondering if that might be a way to make ourselves embed ourselves more into the community. I may have more information on that topic mm -hmm. that I'm able to speak to the people of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and as I said, people do seem interested in addressing this issue. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Meryl. The only other goal that I could think of that um, is, is still um, the effort to reach out to um, members of um, key members of um, the community who are in, in charge of um, I'm, I'm thinking of, for instance, the building inspector, um, the people who really uh, have a grassroots um, knowledge of what's happening in terms of um, the, the land use and the development of new housing. Uh, which is of great concern to me, housing in general, because I, I think that um, I have a great concern about the fact that people with disabilities really have to struggle to stay in Concord because there is a real lack of accessible housing except through you know the 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 elderly uh, channels um, and you know the, there's a, a great um, you know everybody seems to be concerned about affordable housing and diversifying housing and yet there doesn't ever seem to be a discussion when it comes to housing of really providing accessible housing. And there are developers all over the place that come to the town requesting special variances for all sorts of housing. And there's never, from the meetings that I've participated in, and gone to from the planning board, for instance, um, there's never a concern uh, expressed or even discussed about accessible housing. Um, and perhaps it's someone from the planning board that we need to invite. But I, I think there's like this mindset that needs to be expanded and so therefore I, I would set a goal of, of really beginning the conversation with people in town, um, you know, starting really, as I said, with, with perhaps even the building inspector or, you know, trying to pursue some, some routes, um, some to, to just explore um, 
you know, what people, whether there can be an expansion of thinking about housing options. Mm -hmm. Can I just make a comment? I think that, you know, one, one time Jennifer made a sort of a, so uh, comment on something I said I had referred to it as something like accessible housing or okay. disability yeah. housing and she said like you know there's no such thing it really should be universal design it should be housing that is accessible or housing that a person with a disability can live in or easily adapt to their needs right. and so, you know I think that like the building inspector is a place where you know whoever issuing the permits who's ever um, you know, meeting with the developers and approving of their designs, it is a point that we could be made that like, we'd like them to put more emphasis on universal design, housing mm -hmm. that anybody, people of all abilities can live in, as opposed to uh, any kind of segregated or specialized mm -hmm. Exactly. Disability. Yeah, yeah. Oh. right, uh, right. Yeah. And yeah, Can Bonnie. Think, yeah, so I know we're at six o'clock. We probably want to close this up. Right. But I think that this is opening um, a little window into what I do academically. Mm -hmm. And I am doing a PhD in accessible housing and trying to find oh. ways to count oh. a, the, the percent of accessible homes in a municipality. So I'm currently working with wow. the city of Cambridge to... Um, <laughs> just see what's there. Like we, you have mm -hmm. to start with what's accessible. Yeah. What does accessible mean? Which definition? So this is something yeah. that in a couple of months, I might actually, I might wanna maybe present my findings from Cambridge to you all and maybe invite planning to join it. That'd be great. great. Yeah, or yeah. Oh, wonderful. Bonnie, yeah. 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 Building department oh. and planners and the ADA coordinator in Cambridge extensively about this project, so. I'm not ready yet, but but in a couple months I'll I'm all have something to say. Wonderful, oh, wonderful, fantastic. Oh, so great. so let let me let me recap what what I've I've jotted down here in just very cryptic notes. Um, uh, uh, complete complete the planning process for funding requests. Um, increase awareness increased disability awareness through um, newspaper and other media, a brochure and maybe other methods, provide clearer info um, about people with cognitive impairments and, and clearer info designed for them, um, develop the parameters and perhaps make the first accessibility award and promote more accessible housing and universal design and use of universal design. Does that sound kind of like what, what we've yeah. talked yes. about here? Yes. Yeah. Great. And Mary Beth, to your yes. point about inviting groups here, mm -hmm. um, there, there could be an opportunity, it's sort of the opposite direction but um, August 26th, I think is the date, the Rotary Club, um, so everyone in Rotary is being assigned a date to find a speaker. And I was gonna oh. try to get somebody from the PEG Access to come and talk. And the, um, the president elect said to me, well, why don't you come and talk about disability issues? but it would be so much more impactful, I think, if members of this group or some were willing to come and talk a little bit about the work of the commission and what we do to you know, promote full inclusion of people with disabilities in Concord. So that's an, an opportunity if, if people are interested in um, working on that. It's a noontime meeting on a Thursday, and and they're over Zoom. Unfortunately, over Zoom? Okay. I will be away. Um, uh, if they're on vacation. Okay. Now. Okay. Sorry. Well, it, it's not something we need to decide tonight. But if you want to think about it and just drop me an email if you would yeah. be interested in being part of like a little speaker panel, 
Uh, their meetings are an it. hour. You'd be interested, Mary yeah. Beth? Yeah. That's great. You would I'm be not wonderful. Sure about August 26th either. That's a little bit of a tricky time in the middle of the summer. But in mm -hmm. general, I think that's a good idea to try to go out to have, you know, to for us to go to other groups and do mm -hmm. a little education on what we do and who we are and mm -hmm. big mess blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Initially, I, I had envisioned a traveling roadshow. So I, I think that's okay. a great idea. Yeah. Okay. I have to go because. Um, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I do yes. too. Yeah. All right. So um, I'll put some thoughts together about an accessibility award. We'll put it on for the um, August agenda. And hopefully we can get to that. Also finalizing our a mission statement that Bonnie's gonna, gonna kind of craft and uh, or edit around our, um, our original charter and, um, and then sort of voting on the goals and then Sounds whatever good. else might come along. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all tonight. Thank you for bearing with me in the car, in the house, whatever. Um, and I'll see you all in August. Okay. Have a good month. Yeah. Okay. Bye. We have a July meeting, don't we? Oh, that's tonight. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've okay. had it. Okay. See you in August. Right. Bye -bye. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you.